to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner. Brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. First, let's take a minute or so to help those unfortunate folks among you who have trouble getting to sleep nights. Now listen to this, light sleepers. Here's a plan that may help you. Avoid eating a heavy, hard-to-digest meal last thing at night. Instead, drink a cool, restful glass full of Horlicks malted milk just before going to bed. It'll cool you off and at the same time rest and relax you. Help you to get to sleep easily and naturally. Thousands of Lum and Abner's friends who found Horlicks hot, so beneficial for promoting sleep all winter, find it equally helpful in summer. It's a good idea, by the way, to mix up a pitcher full of Horlicks and keep it on hand in the refrigerator so that it's always ready to serve to your family or guests. They'll appreciate it. Get a package of Horlicks from your druggist in either natural or chocolate flavor. And now, let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. Even though Squire Skimp is violating an old city ordinance by operating a theater on the second floor of a building in Pine Ridge, Lum refuses to issue a warrant closing his competitor's place of business. Abner thinks this would be a simple way to eliminate competition. And as we look in on the Jotham Down store today, we find the old fellow still arguing about the matter. Listen. Well, Abner, I don't want us to have to resort to no underhanded tic tacs like that. If we can't get our share of the business fair and square, I just don't want it. Well, that ain't underhanded. The law says that you can't run a theater upstairs here in Pine Ridge, and that's what squires are doing. He's a making a violate of the law every time he opens them doors. Yeah, but that's an old law that ought to been appealed long ago. Yeah, but it wasn't, Rum, well, I and it's still a law. And Grandpappy Spear said that he wanted you to swear out a warrant for his E-Rand. Well, Grandpappy's just mad because he got fired, and he just wants me to close him up over there to get even with Squire. Well, that ain't your lookout. You're the justice of the peace, and when someone comes to you and wants you to make out a warrant, well, you've got to do it. Well, I don't care what I'm supposed to do. I ain't going to do it, and that settles it. I don't want everybody here in Pine Ridge going around saying I take an advantage of my office to illuminate competition. Well, Grandpap was over here a while ago, and he wanted to know if I'd solve them papers, and I just told him that you wouldn't make them out. He said he was going to start a movement to get you thrown out of office. He was awful mad about it. Just raised You might as well stop arguing with me, Abner. My mind's made up. You're just wasting your breath. Well, Dad, blame me. What you used to have, Lord, it... Huh? Huh? What, what did you say about my breath? I say you're just wasting it arguing with me. Oh, I don't care about that. <laughs> There's plenty more where it come from. Plenty more what? Breath. I don't mind wasting it. The air is full of it. Yeah, but it ain't no use to waste it. It ain't doing you no good. Well, how are you going to waste your breath? Why are you talking all the time like you do when you ain't getting nowhere? I ain't trying to get nowhere. I'm just sitting. I mean you ain't getting nowhere with your talk, wasting your breath. And well, it don't take a bit more breath to talk than it does to just breathe. Maybe I'll be getting some use out of it. <laughs> just let the words go out with your breathing. <laughs> that's just what you're doing, too. <laughs> just letting your words run out with your breathing. Yeah, that's what I say. <laughs> It ain't no trouble. I, I just open my mouth and there they come. <laughs> That's just the way you sound, too. Just about that much thought behind what you say. Uh, thought behind it. Yeah, you ought to weigh your words for you, Sam. Weigh them? Yes, weigh them. I, I never would get nothing said if I had to stop and weigh every word. Well, That's what you ought to do anyway, to sound intelligent. Yeah, I never know that before. It's a good rule to follow. Like that old lettered thing in a mind. Speak your silver and silence is go. Uh, no, that don't work that well. Hello? Hello? Uh, what are you doing? Hello? No, uh, hello don't weigh very much, and these scales ain't working very well. Long. What are you trying to do anyway? Well, I'm trying to weigh a word here. Must be too light for these scales. Uh, what's a good heavy word? Lead. Er, lead. Oh, lead. for goodness sake. I know that that done it all. <laughs> Did you see a run up there then? Went might not up this one. Oh, I had my hand on it. Already. Get away from them scales, Abner. Now, just leave them alone. Sit down there. Well, oh, I'm just trying sake. to do what you I know do. what you're trying to do. You said I ought to weigh every one. I said you're supposed to weigh them before you say them. Well, how are you going to weigh something before you've got it? Before you've got it? Yeah, it, it ain't a word till you get it said, and, and it's too late to weigh it. 
Abner, I don't mean weigh them on a pair of scales. Weigh them in your head. In my head? Yeah. <laughs> Have I got something in my head that I can weigh them with? Uh, the way you talk, I don't think you've got nothing up there. Well, how am I going to weigh them up there? There ain't nothing there to weigh them with. I don't reckon you can. Just forget about it. Forget about it. I don't believe I can either. You're supposed to think before you say something. Study it over good. I don't mean sure enough weight stuff. Well, uh, what about potatoes? What about them? If somebody comes in here wanting some potatoes, why, you want me to just uh, think about them and study them over good instead of putting them up on the scales and weighing them? Oh, for goodness sake. Of course not, of course not. I'm just talking about things you say. When you're talking, watch what you say. Watch it. Watch your words. See that you're saying the right thing. Oh, for goodness sake, Lop. Who ever heard of seeing words? You say them, but you can't see them. Of course not. Of course not. My dog is now come to think about it. Uh, uh, Do they look like smoke? Like smoke? Yeah, does words look like smoke? Not that I know of. And I I just want to say, in in cold weather when I talk, well, (laughs) there's something that comes out of my mouth that looks like smoke. That ain't words, Dad. Now, that's your breath. You can't see words. Oh, yes, you can, too. Or some of you can, I know. What about a newspaper? They got words all over them. Well, that's reading, though. I'm talking about talking words. Oh, yeah, you might be right there. Uh, just forget about words. I kind of like to talk about them, huh? I uh, see you. Do. <laughs> I, I never had talked much about them before. Just sort of took them for granted that I had. <laughs> words. Reckon what happens to them after you get done saying them, Lon? I don't know. Yeah, I don't either. Just float around in the air, I reckon. I'd like to see all the words that's ever been said stacked up in a big pile sometime. <laughs> Law me, no telling how far up in the sky that would go, is it? <laughs> Bound you about half of them be Sister Simpson's too amount of talking she does. <laughs> oh, for goodness sake, Sam. Now, you can talk more foolishness than one man i ever seen in my life. foolishness? I'd like to see them. They'd look awful funny to see all the words that anybody ever said all together that way. Wait a minute. Jonathan, Dick, and Grandpa, thank goodness for that. I won't have to put up with this no longer. Uh, don't get to asking them anything about words. They'll think you've lost your mind. That ain't no secret to me no longer. No. <laughs> and I reckon that's because you know me so well. What did you say? Nothing. Just be quiet. Quit talking so much. Reckon what Dick and Grandpa's a want, anyway. I don't know. Hope Grandpa's changed his mind about swearing out the warrant against Squire. Ah, uh, Swan Lom, you're the beatenest fella I ever seen in my life. Well, gentlemen, gentlemen. Well, howdy, Lom. Hello, Abner. Yeah, howdy, howdy. Come in, come in. <laughs> what you fellas wearing such long faces about? Looks like you just hear judgment was are coming in the morning. <laughs> no, we want to have a little talk with you, Lom. Yeah, yeah. Abner told me a while ago that you refused to get out them papers against Squire Skimp, Lom, and I went down and told Dick about it, and he feels just like I do. Yeah, uh, Lom, if that's a violation of the city ordinance to operate a picture show on the second floor of a building that way, and Grandpap wants you to make out a complaint, well, there's no reason why you shouldn't issue the warrant. Well, the thing of it is, Dick, that old ordinance was passed way back in the early days of Pine Ridge. Nobody don't pay no attention to them old laws no more. There's another in there about somebody having to carry a lantern and a red flag out in front of an automobile when it's going down the street. Well, um, they may not enforce them, but they're still laws. Until they're struck off the record, well, they're laws, and they should be abided by. Well, you think we ought to go around arresting folks for driving automobiles unless they got somebody walking along in front of them? Well, no, but they didn't like this other one, Lom. It uh, doesn't arrest the people's lives around here like this uh, theater law. Yeah, but if I was to close Squire's camp up, everybody in town would say I'd just done it to get shut of competition. I know, but that isn't the point, Lon. You took this office and swore that you'd carry out the law. Well, I'm just trying to do right, Dick. Yeah, you just a fear to squire. That's what's the matter with you. No, it ain't that, Grandpad. If Abner and me wasn't in the picture show business ourselves, and you come in here and swore out a warrant, I'd go well, ahead. Lon, I... regardless of what your feelings are, the place ought to be closed. All the big crowds he's having in there and just got that one little stairway for him to get out. Yeah. If the fire was to break out up there, why, they'd be trapped like rats. Grannies, I never thought about that. Well, that's the truth. Why, they can't hardly get out of there when the show's over now. That stairway ain't over three foot wide. Why, it's worth a body's life to try to get out of there when the show's over. Me and the lady Beth was over there the other night. Of all us pushing and shoving, I never seen the like of it in my life. And if a fire was to break out, what would it be like? Why, it'd be terrible. 
They'd stack up in that stairway there so, so, so nobody get out. That old frame building is just a regular fire trap anyway. Yeah, sure it is. It'd burn just like kindling wood. Think of the children, Lum. If you refuse to issue a warrant closing that place and anything happens over there, why, you'd be indirectly responsible for those lies. You just can't let that show stay up there. I don't know what to do. Well, now, Grandpap and I, as taxpayers, are demanding that you close that place up. I know how you feel about it, and I admire you for it. But I'm telling you right now, if you don't do something before night, well, we'll find some other way to have it done. Well, all right. We'll close him up. <laughs> and wouldn't we all like to be present and see that warrant served? And now, ladies and gentlemen, here's another remarkable tribute to the healing powers of Horlick's malted milk. It's in the form of a letter from Mrs. B.M.E. of Edgewater Park, New Jersey. Listen. Three years ago, I was on a liner en route to Singapore from Italy. On board was a fellow passenger who was so ill from stomach trouble he couldn't even keep a teaspoonful of water on his stomach. One night, I was told he was dying and wouldn't let the ship's MD or any foreign person attend him. So I decided to try and help him myself. I had a bottle of Horlick's malted milk, so I mixed them with hot water and sent it to the man, suggesting that he take a teaspoonful every five or ten minutes until it was done. The next day, people were all talking about his recovery and the remedy, and I was for a day a hero. After that, he was able to drink water and take light food and made a remarkable comeback. Later, I was told that his trouble was stomach ulcers and that the Horlicks helped him by forming a poultice on the lining of his stomach. A very interesting letter, Mrs. B.M.E. We're certainly glad that you wrote and told us your experience. Horlicks, you know, has been of tremendous value in many other similar cases ever since it was discovered over 50 years ago. This is Carlton Bricker, speaking for Lum and Abner and Horlicks, who now bid you all good night and good health.